Good afternoon, my name is Braden Rant from Second Life and welcome to the fifth part of uh, building a mesh sofa for Second Life. And we've gone through the metal well, excuse me, we've gone through the modelling process and now we've come to get to the texture inside. Uh, obviously a lot of people may be used to applications such as GIMP, uh, Photoshop uh, and various other things. What we're going to do just for today is we're going to be covering the materials part and assigning a texture to those materials. Uh, at the present moment I've got four lights set up in the scene and a camera. We won't necessarily need the camera because we're not rendering to an image. Uh, we're actually going to be rendering the textures out so that you can apply them to a model in Second Life. Uh, the principle is still the same whether you use any game uh, that allows you to um, use a, a, a texture really uh, so it may not be for Second Life it will also work for Cloud Party, uh, IMVU, uh, various different methods but in this instance because I'm primarily in Second Life uh, I, I've done it for Second Life Right, so we have the sofa. It's not high res. I've said to you last week, uh, you don't really need to do it in such high res. This one currently is 1,876 vertices, uh, which in real terms is actually only about 800 more than a Sculpty. Uh, you could probably get it lower. Uh, I've left a lot of vertices in currently. Uh, when you go into doing things like LOD, you can reduce them substantially. Uh, by reduce by removing things like you know uh, rows like this that don't necessarily do anything directly uh, I've left them in just really laziness uh, as this is just a tutorial if you're going to be uploading this you can get it down substantially just by merging certain rows together or removing them uh, but for this instance as I say what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be covering materials now, a material, uh, well, first of all, when people think of texture, they think of what they see uh, on, on screen, you know, whether it be clothes or furniture or, or anything, uh, even photo source, they see that as the texture part. However, uh, what we have to do remember is that a texture is a collection of various maps. And those maps, for the most part, uh, are diffuse, which is the colour map, uh, which is basically your texture without any shading, without any uh, depth. It's really just it is just colour. Uh, then we have a normal map. Now a normal map is a we used to know it as bump mapping uh, in the old days, and certainly SL does have a facility for very rudimentary bump mapping uh, but normal mapping uh, is quite current and it, it is being uh, superseded with uh, things like parallel uh, think parallax uh, mapping but ultimately it is still only bump mapping uh, and then we have a uh, specular map a specular map is how reflections bounce off something so uh, for example a glass or a uh, or a, a a shiny surface it's not necessarily a much a reflection but really just how the light would would hit that item uh, they're the three main ones that most people would uh, would associate with so once they're all put together it also introduces things like ambient occlusion uh, Ambient occlusion is the shadows that something generates by being next to something. Uh, and of course you then also have shadow maps. You, you have a whole selection of maps that you can choose from. You do get applications like Shader Map Pro uh, that can generate these maps from an image. But as I say for today, we're just going to be hitting the texture on it and probably just doing a, a quick bake. Uh, with the lights as they are uh, to go from there so right what I've got first of all is uh, because this item is going to use the same texture on all of the cushions I can quite safely select the whole sofa 
Uh, as you can see in the UV window, it's remain unchanged from last week. Uh, and then what we can do is we can select for a new material. So you go over to the right and select new, and then it will come up with material. I'm going to change its name uh, just to sofa, and then I can assign. So I've assigned that material to these vertices. You can assign different materials to different, uh, I mean, for example, I could select just the arm of this chair and select a new material and again assign it. I'm not going to do that for now uh, purely by the fact that I, I really just want the same material on the whole thing. So just to check that out, right? we've assigned it, I'll select it just to see, yep everything's selected, that's absolutely great. Here in the preview we can see that the material has nothing on it, it's just a completely uh, which is a great ball, really. Uh, we have the different settings of diffuse, specular, uh, how the shading would apply. For example, if we did shadeless, you can see from the from the sphere there uh, that when we have shadeless, it has no reflective. It has no real shaders at all. So we'll turn it back off. Uh, we, if we wanted transparency, we could apply transparency there, the same as uh, as mirror. If we was doing, for example, a metal or, or something like that. Uh, right, okay, the other options further down really aren't, aren't something that we were, we'll kick off with today. Um, but definitely uh, these items, generally as their default settings are fine. So we've assigned a material uh, and what we want to do then is select, select a texture to be assigned to that material. So if we go to this uh, sort of red and white checkerboard pattern uh, next to your material marble, and we select it. We then have a window where we can assign a material, uh, sorry, a texture to that material. Okay, so right, the first thing we're going to do is we'll press the new button. So we're actually going to say a new texture. And this will give us the option to decide what type of, uh, of texture that we want to apply. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll click on the type and we want it as image or movie. So we'll change that as so. And then uh, we don't need to change any of the colours on the texture just yet. So we'll go to open. And I've got my seamless leather texture there. That I use this quite a lot. It's one of my favourites. As you can see, it then comes up in your, uh, your preview window. Uh, you can look at how the texture is in its base and also how it's applied as material. So once we've done that, we can then go down to the mapping part and we change it from generated and we change it to UV. So it's now mapped to however the UV is laid out uh, within your UV, your UV window. So now we're there, we don't need to change the size or anything just yet. But what I'm going to do is I can go back to the render Right, and I can change it first of all. Uh, let me just change it to texture, see how that applies. As we can see, it's starting to bake out uh, within the window, and we have a rather rudimentary, rudimentary, rudimentary textured, uh, textured sofa, as you can see in the window, uh, and a, a very base texture that we have here. We can actually. Uh, if we go to image and we save as image, uh, we can save that out uh, and work on it in Photoshop if we wanted to. And once we do that, we can actually uh, we can re-import it in from Photoshop by uh, going to textures and changing the texture from well currently seamless leather to whatever texture we generate. Uh, but we have we have this basic uh, leather texture on it. I say it's, it's, no, it's got no shading on it at the present moment. So what I'm going to do is I'll change it from just textures. Uh, let's I'll run through each one. So if we go to ambient occlusion and we bake that out, uh, I'll pause it while it's baking just so you don't have to wait. Okay, so right, well, welcome back. We've uh, baked out an ambient occlusion texture. As you can see, it looks very very grainy, and the reason it's very grainy is because the sample rate is quite low. Uh, which at this stage is actually okay, because the higher you get it, the more crisper the image. Uh, 
what I'm going to do for this example is if I go to uh, I believe it's world and we turn on to bake ambient occlusion uh, and if we bake that again uh, again I'll just pause it while it uh, while it bakes so bear with me okay that's uh, now baked and as you can see absolutely no difference whatsoever but if we uh, if we go down and we change the samples here from five let's move it up to 15 and I'll go back and I'll start that bake again and again I'll pause the video so that you don't have to wait through the baking process okay right it's uh, rendered out and as you can see the difference now is uh, quite substantial uh, we've lost most of the uh, the graininess that was being applied to the uh, the sofa material uh, from the ambient occlusion so uh, that's ambient occlusion most of the others don't work particularly well uh, things like shadow you just get a white sofa really it doesn't really look that great uh, but when you select a full render it chooses to render everything uh, so any maps that you've applied uh, will apply to that uh, second when you try and bake specular onto a texture it will not work uh, so we'll be covering that uh, after I've uh, rendered the sofa as it stands so again I'm going to start it off with a full uh, full render and then I'll pause it while uh, while that bakes and I'll get straight back onto you okay here I am back again and uh, as you can see we now have a well it's, it looks rather suede I think it looks quite, quite fetching but uh, this is the sofa now that's been rendered uh, in that scene with the lighting is, is if we look into the camera port and I do a render of that uh, you'll see that uh, it, it's not a great deal different we do have a certain amount of uh, specularity that's on the sofa as it is uh, well that doesn't get baked in which is what I was saying before I paused it uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can actually get your textures to bake in the specularity it gives the overall effect of a nice shiny leather uh, and I think it actually looks quite nice so what I'm going to do is I'll uh, I'll escape from from that and I'll, uh, I'll go back to my 3d view for the image turn off the camera and we'll go back to the sofa right what we want to do is we want this texture that we have that we've created to apply specularity we can only do that by applying nodes now I know nodes is something that most people will go uh oh, scary uh, but it's really not that bad if you're doing very rudimentary things it can be very very complicated uh, especially if you're rendering in things like cycles uh, cycles is windows uh, sorry windows blenders internal uh, new internal renderer which is great for rendering scenes but it does not generate textures uh, so you won't be able to use it to create any game textures at all. Uh, so the Blender internal render is absolutely fine. Uh, you just have to be a little bit more creative with your uh, your final texturing. <coughs> right, okay, so let's create a node. So we go back over to our materials. As you can see, we have the, uh, the sofa there, which is absolutely fine. Uh, and what we're going to do is we can select nodes... Uh, where it says here, look, if we go, uh, use shade and nose to render this material. So we, we click that, and we get this little window appear in our, uh, in our node editor down here with a material and an output. Uh, we don't need the material at the moment. It doesn't give us the amount of options, so we delete that. Uh, we can then press Control-A, and we add an extended material. So once we create an extended material... Uh, what we can do is we can open up the material we wish to use, which is the sofa. We can then press Control A again, and we can add a color mix. And we get the color mix, and we can then grab our color option and drag it and link it to the first option on the mix. We can then select specularity and do the same 
so the second option and then the output we can output to the color on the output channel okay so we've set up the node uh, at the moment it's set for mix the mix will darken it just slightly but we can uh, change uh, the amount of mix within uh, within this window here uh, if we do add it should keep uh, the amount of shade the same so we'll leave it at mix for the moment and I'm going to select a render and I'll pause the video while we render this out and then we can see how the end result looks okay now the uh, the rendering is is finished we can uh, we can see the sofa and as you can see on the arms uh, the top of the cushions along the front that we now have a specular reflection on this sofa and on the map that we've generated which contains both the specular and the diffuse channels uh, and that texture can now be uploaded into Second Life along with the sofa uh, object. Uh, we're not going to apply any normal maps to this at the present moment and I'd, uh, I'd like to think that this sofa for now is actually completed. These are the basic instructions. Uh, this is not the most detailed sofa. Uh, it's really just a, as an example uh, how to create something, an item of furniture in Second Life. You can apply various different methods of using normal maps if you want. We'll be covering normal maps at a later date. But for now, I'd like to thank you all for listening to this tutorial. I hope it's been of some use to you. If you've got any uh, anything that you would like to know how to do, uh, then please feel free to contact me either on the uh, YouTube channel or the Facebook page or indeed uh, through Braden Wren on Second Life. So I'd like to thank you very much and I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye.